Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with these forms. So these inputs here, the default inputs, they never look that good. And the buttons don't look that good. You can see here, they don't look so great. Uh, and styling them is a pain because you have to select, you know, email, name, date. There's so many, there's so many things that you have to select to style them so that across the board it's consistent. But with Bourbon, let me show you here, text inputs, you can use a variable, an interpolated variable. So this is called an interpolation, what's wrapping this variable. Uh, it's because in this variable, you're actually going to be outputting all of this as a selector. So type color, date, date, time, email, month, number, password, search, tell, text, time, URL, week, so much, and text area. So just by typing all text inputs and wrap it in an interpolation, that is the syntax you need to write, and it will select all of the different inputs. And then you could style them. You could also select the focus and, and hover versions of those and the active version. So all of this CSS, look at this, look at all these lines. You would have to write all that, but this is all you have to write. We're using some bourbon for this. So let's jump back into our code editor here and let's open up forms.sass, the partial under modules. And we're gonna just style up these inputs. So we're gonna say uh, we need to do the interpolated variable. So this is all text inputs. Let's style it up. Position, relative, padding, 10 pixels, font size, base size, border, solid, one pixel, triple three, and box shadow, negative four pixels, four pixels, and zero, and triple three, four, triple four. And let's see what that looks like. Look at that, that looks so nice. It has a little bit of a hard box shadow offset to the left and down below. So now let's um, play with these when you uh, focus and you hover over them. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, paste it below and say all text inputs dash focus and one more, a little bit of a grouping selector here and hover. And now I just need to style this up. I'm gonna say border color, I'm gonna change it to triple three. This is on focus and hover. Outline color, we're gonna change it to success instead of that blurry blue one. And we're gonna say box shadow, negative six pixels, six pixels, zero, and triple two. So it's gonna pop it over to more pixels, down two more pixels, and darken it by a little bit more. And so this is what happens as just some feedback when you hover over the, and you focus on the inputs. So. You can see the difference there, it's kind of neat. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna style that placeholder there. Now normally styling placeholders are kind of a pain in the butt, but Bourbon has a really easy way of styling placeholders. So this is what it looks like. So here's the placeholder mixin, and it outputs vendor prefix placeholders for styling. So it's like this. This, you all you have to type in is placeholder, include placeholder or plus placeholder if you're using SAS versus SCSS. And then it, the output is this, really cool. Now, the the one note is that you have to actually nest it in a rule set. So you, you can't just have placeholder be floating out by itself out here somewhere, because what, what are you styling? They're styling no placeholder. You can't just style all the placeholders um, without it being with it nested. So what I'm gonna have it do is nest it within, there we go, the focus and hover inputs. So now what I get to do, Let's change the color to triple eight. Now on hover and focus, I'm gonna get even more feedback. Those inputs, those placeholders are gonna, they're gonna change for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna style the buttons. You can do the same thing with the buttons in Bourbon that you did with the inputs. So we're gonna say button inputs, and that's the actual button tag and the input button tag, not like, a, a links with the class of button or anything like that. So we're gonna select all the buttons using an interpolation and then all dash buttons variable, background color, we're going for pink font size, we're gonna go for base size, font weight, normal. We're gonna give it some padding of 10 pixels. We're gonna border solid one pixels, throw some shade, pink 10%. 
and then box shadow, negative four pixels, four pixels, zero, and then throw some shade, pink, I love that, 20%. And then we're gonna give it the color of white. Watch what happens. I'm gonna save, and that button is so nice. Look at that, that looks great. But I need some feedback. I need a cursor pointer, and I need just a little bit of visual feedback when I hover. So why don't we go here, use another interpolation, and say all dash buttons dash hover. And we want it to be on the focus version as well. There we go. So now we can style the buttons focus and hover. So the outline, I don't want, uh, I don't want that blue outline. I don't want that. So I'm going to say outline none, border, solid one pixel, throw some shade. I'm going to do that every single time. Pink 20% and cursor pointer. Let's see if we get some of that visual feedback. Uh, it's not working. And that's because silly Brad, I didn't make these variables. So the interpolation is the pound sign, curly braces, wrapping the variable itself. That's how we do it. Now if I save, this should work. I should get some visual feedback. I got my cursor, pointer, and I get just a slight border on the background. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tell Bourbon to style all buttons that are active. So we got the variable all-buttons-active. And look at me screwing up the syntax again. Pound sign, curly braces, and then the variable, all buttons active. Outline, no outline, position, relative. We got the top, we're gonna pop it down two pixels. Left, we're gonna pop it over negative two pixels. And then box, shadow, negative two pixels, two pixels, zero, throw some shade, pink, 20%, 30%, let's do that. And I'll save this. Now we're gonna get a little bit of feedback when we click, look at that, that looks great. Cool, that's pretty neat. So that's how we would do that. Now we're gonna do one last thing here. We're gonna animate these boxes. We're gonna make them, give them a, like a, a, a wow effect. Wow, you know what I mean? Like, wow, we're gonna do that, wow, that. So let's do that, we're gonna jump into box sass partial under modules, there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a keyframe and then call the animation. Uh, so in Bourbon, writing a keyframe is as simple as plus keyframes and then the name of the animation itself or the name of the keyframe. And normally you'd say from, you know, the syntax would be from and then you'd put your style, uh, what you wanted to do in here and to and then you put your style in here. But we're actually gonna use something a little bit more specific. We're gonna say 0%, 50%, and 100%. So at 0% do this, 50% do this, 100% do this. So let's do this. We're gonna tell it to transform, and this is another mix-in from Bourbon. I'm going full tilt here. We're gonna scale one. So this is just saying the scale starts at 100%. It's not gonna do anything at zero. But at 50%, we're gonna make that transform. We're gonna scale, and this is all CSS3 by the way, two, so it's gonna double the size. And we're also gonna rotate it negative six degrees, just like that. And now we're going to do one last thing. We're gonna transform it back to scale one. So this is gonna say at 0%, keep it as is. You could do something else here if you want, but keep the scale at one. We want a baseline to go from. And then 50% of the animation, this is the timeline, scale it twice the size and rotate it negative six degrees. So we're right here right now. We're going from zero to 50% and then 100%, bring it back down to one and there's no rotate. So it brings it back here. So we're going, make sense? That's what we're doing in this keyframe. And now if I save this, show you the actual output, the CSS is pretty brutal. Look at that, oh my goodness. Look at all the CSS we would have had to write in that keyframe, and there's more. So look at all that, we would have had to write that. And who's gonna do that? I'm not gonna do that. So I didn't have to do that, neither did you, because this is all you had to write. That's great. So now all we have to do is call that animation pass in a few arguments to make it do stuff and everybody's gonna be happy. So we're gonna go under box here and we're gonna say when you hover on this box, this is what's gonna happen. Animation, this is a mix in, obviously from Bourbon. And then you call the name of the keyframe. So wow, 
and then the duration you want it to last for, 0.5 seconds. So a really short, wow, you know what I mean? And then we're going to uh, use a timing function. So how do you want it to animate? Do you want it to be linear? Just wow. Or do you want it to like ease in out like wow, something like that? Or do you want to do something else more exciting? Uh, and Bourbon lets you play with those timing functions right here. And these are all the different cubic Bezier timing functions that are variables that can be used with CSS3 animations and transitions. This is really cool. So the demo lets you see the different variables available to you. And when you hover over it, it shows you what they look like. So you could get a sense of what animation you want to, or what timing function you want to use. And I want to use ease in out quint, this one. It's like really slow, quick slow. That's what we're going to use. So right here you say ease in out quint. And then the last uh, argument you pass in is how you want it to loop. Do you want it to loop infinitely, one time, two times? How do you want to do it? One time, just one, save that. Now let's hover over the boxes. You ready for it? Well, that's impressive. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, that's <laughs> so great, whoa. <laughs> anyway, that is cool. And then your output looks uh, like this. Keyframes, and then you're calling that animation. So cubic bezier, look at these things that you would have had to write. I don't want to do that. I want to design sites and make websites and get paid for it. I don't want to have to write cubic bezier functions, but with bourbon, I could do that super easy with a variable. So that's the point of bourbon. It allows you to, to take SAS, which is already powerful in and of itself, and then add bourbon on top so that you can use different mix-ins and functions and variables to save you so much friggin' time. So that you can get back to what's important, building your sites, completing your projects, your applications, and getting paid for them or whatever it is the point that you're doing it for. So that is bourbon. There's This is just scratching the surface, honestly. There's so much more to bourbon. I encourage you to go to bourbon.io slash docs and play around with the documentation. Check out the change log, you know, experiment with bourbon and keep going with this. Don't just stop here and go to the next video. I want you to play more with bourbon and try different things out on this demo site or your own site. Get more familiar, actually, dive into it a little bit more and then make your way to the next set of videos and then we'll learn more about other things. <laughs> <laughs>